Thank you. So today I'm going to tell you something about how to reduce Redux boilerplate. So who knows, who knows Redux? Cool. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Redux is, Redux is a predictable state container for JavaScript applications. And to tell you a bit more about it, I will show you an example. And the example is a simple counter, which can increment or decrement by a value. Now, this is how traditionally Redux code looks like. It consists of files in three directories. We have actions. We have reducers, and we have some constants which glue together these files. So what's wrong with this? Well, first of all, I don't like this redundancy, that I have these constants which glue my files together. The second problem, which is much more important, is that my logic is split across these two files, actions and reducers. And now this is bad because in action, I already know what to do, so why I need to look at another file to see what the, the action is actually doing. Finally, I don't really like this imperative style of reducing because this can lead to bugs. So what can we do? Well, we should keep Redux uh, because it's awesome, but we can abuse it a bit. So let me show you how we can do it. First of all, let's start with our Redux example. What I really want to do is I want to move this reducer from the right side to the left side. So I just add a reducer to the actions, and now what I can do is I can simply replace the, re the root reducer with, with a simple calling the action.reducer, and that's it. After I did this, the, uh, the interesting thing is now I don't need actually these constants, and actually I don't even need the action.type. So yeah, I, this is not necessary, uh, but we will keep it because all the Redux middleware actually expects actions to have type, and so we can actually stick it, stick something important there. Uh, the user readable, uh, the the action, what, what, it, what it is doing in in a in a much more friendly way than than the string we had there before. So now I remove the constants. What I can do more with this approach? Well. Usually, when I want to reduce something, I don't want to reduce it in, in the root state. I want to reduce it somewhere down in some substate. So what I can do is I can attach path to the actions, and now simply I ch can change my reducer to use some, uh, some function which can update deep in the state uh, according to the, the, the reducer. And this is quite cool because you can ask, well, what if I have more counters? I can store them. Uh, in, in two parts of a state, A and B, and now I can simply route my actions according to the EI ID, I just change the path. Similarly, uh, if I have more counters, I can actually create something which is an action factory, which takes a path at which uh, it should work, and returns actions which will perform the reducing on this path. And so, by doing this, I can have counters which work not only on a specific IDs, but on arbitrary paths inside my state. And so this is the whole idea uh, I was trying to sell you today. Uh, what did we gain? Well, first of all, we kept Redux uh, and all of its middlewares. Second of all, we reduced a lot of boilerplate which is inherent to Redux. And most importantly, we collocated the code which was spread across actions and reducers, but logically uh, it belongs to a single entity. Of course, we did lose something. Uh, we did lose the serializability of the actions. Now, uh, this is not such a big deal. Most of the middlewares we use actually can handle this gracefully. So if you don't really need perfect uh, time travel, you can still attach some functions to actions, and it works. And so, to sum up, Redux is cool, but it's not the holy grail. You can bend it to your needs, and you should evaluate what, what are your wins and losses on, on a project, and just choose the architecture which suits you the best.